beneficiaries are not recognised. Only legal, that's why they call it legal, only legal title is recognised. So what we say is trust recipient when we're referring to uh, position as the uh, beneficiary of, of the and the corporate uh, personality of the trust and that's why we use those words rather than beneficiary okay okay very very good Frank so basically that gives the uh, the uh, essence of legal title correct Yes, it keeps us in a, a position of, of uh, being part of the legal title without claiming the role of being trustee. That's right, trust recipient. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a caller, another question from Ron. Let me uh, get to Ron here on the phone line. Ron? Hi, Frank. Hi, Ron. Hey, you mentioned that you, you were posting the LIBOR record where we could edit it online. Where is it exactly? Uh, it's not there. Okay, it's not there yet. But when you go to One Heaven, you'll find it on the on the navigation. It says register. When you click on that, you'll see that it, it's it's grayed out. But there will be at the bottom there the ability to um, see the Lightborn record. In fact, let me just click on it myself. While I've got here. So we click on register next to FAQ, and I've got their Great Western Public Record. Then I've got search, and then. The last one there, it says find Lifeborn record, and then the bottom says um, register data entry. Uh, hopefully that's what it says. Let me just see that I've got it up there. It might only be on my computer. Let me just have a look. No, no, it's there. Yeah. So they will be turned on, and that's where you're going to see it. It'll say find Lifeborn record. Now, if you're registered, your, your Lifeborn record will appear by punching in your number. Okay? Oh, I see. Do you want to hear another story about the SS4 debacle? Uh, if it's short, yes. Yeah, it's short. Four of us decided to do the SS4 together. Three of us put in the SS4 via fax like two weeks ago. We all three received the, the uh, EIN number. The fourth person was one week behind us, and he's been denied twice once on the old sample and once on the new sample, you know, the new wording. Uh, yep. I emailed you what the IRS had sent back to him. They are basically demanding now uh, the name of the grantor and an EIN or an SSAN number. That's the bottom line. Well, okay, the grantor of... Now, do you remember I asked you this question, Ron? Who's the, who's, the, who's the grantor of your true trust? Well, that's the divine creator. That's right. Um, do you, could the IRS please give us their SSN for the divine creator so we can get the form in, please? <laughs> I know. I was sick of that myself. And Oh, they, they also want the name of the trust. They don't want just a number. Well, that is the name. No, they want a name. I, I sent it to you. This is a form that they filled out and sent back to us. That's fine. This is why it's going to the director of the IRS, because unless yep. they can tell us that uh, a name means, um, means they're, they're demanding that it is registered in, in their system as property they own. That's what they're saying right. by name. And uh, that's not in the rules. The rules is by a, a courtesy. Um, they are the front office for the IMF, and the biz and the system and uh, if they're denying then uh, then we will rightfully raise it to the next level and it can all be handled through the direct the what is it the commissioner commissioner or director of IRS I can never remember commissioner commissioner so and when the commissioner's office doesn't do it then it'll go up to the IMF and when the IMF doesn't do it, it'll go up to the biz but but Ron it's only a courtesy I know that that it would be nice for people to have their EIN and to set up their trust account and to do it all properly, but that's on the proviso that the system follows their own rules. I mean, I can't, none of us can do anything if they don't follow their own rules, right? Right. But when they do not follow their own rules, that puts them in dishonor, right? Right, it does. And then when ultimately we come to the end of this year, 
and the whole system has proven itself unworthy and we've got our own systems in place, then it's getting to the end, isn't it? Yes, it is. Good. So and I'm also have that. a heck of a time oh. opening up a special deposit bank account. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we just, yeah. You can't believe what what I'm going through. Well, another point of dishonor because yep. it's a it, it 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 is an option. It's built in. They do it. All the all the um, all their uh, municipals and everything else is on special deposit, right? And so are attorneys. And so are attorneys. Well, so yep. there you go. Yep. But I found out a. a something about an attorney account today, they are actually paid interest, but the interest is sent to the state. The attorneys cannot keep the interest. That's, That's interesting. Yes, it is. Yeah, not very interesting. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, keep, keep the war stories, but we'll talk about your title separately offline. Okay, okay good. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Um, now on the passport issue, um, the concern about the existing passport, uh, Frank, was that the name is in all caps, and uh, therefore, you know, that question was regarding them trying to pre presume a, a contract again, even if you have done the EDP process. Well, as you've seen, at the lower bridge trial level, we're dealing with such stupidity that that is probably what's going to happen at the lower level, that there is those presumptions. But um, just as your driver's license is in all caps or your insurance is in all caps, the what the EDP process does when it's done properly, and I'm sure everyone is doing it properly, is that it is a perfected claim of right that is claiming a divine right. Now, from that point on, you can contest any presumption that you are recontracting. Will it stop them from making that presumption, which is, I guess, the question? No, it won't. But all you need to know is that as a, as a principle as well as a precedent, once you lodge a claim, a perfected claim of right, particularly when it is claiming divine rights in the system, then in no way can a presumption of recontracting when it is under the laws of necessity be used against you as claiming that you are, if you like, withdrawn your EDP process, okay? Right, so basically really the, the withdrawal of consent is an important step here to, that could actually uh, correct a lot of these issues uh, regarding those things because really the, the withdrawal of consent uh, following along the law of necessity and under duress uh, to have to use certain things to be safe and be able to travel safely. Um, it is just what you have to do. But that withdrawal consent should take care of uh, quite a bit of the issues here. I agree. Uh, I agree. And, and I think for, for the sake of their system, the withdrawal of consent should conform into a, a form that they at least can comprehend um, sadly, for many of them at the lower level, uh, even though they can read English, the EDPs are beyond their comprehension. Yeah? Right. So will, will the term diplomatic immunity apply to us? Well, it should apply to you. I mean, okay, what is diplomatic immunity? Um, the first words on the top of an EDP use the word circumscribed. And what is circumscribed? Well, you cannot claim an office. So firstly, you can't seal a deed unless you hold ecclesiastical office. That's a fact. And you can't hold an office by the, the oldest principles of the Roman system unless you possess uh, or in your control some sanctified space. And they call that a chapel or chamber like a judge's chamber um, or a sanctuary or a chapel for the clerk. And, and, and how is a sacred space created? It's created by circumscribing. So by sending your deed and saying that you are circumscribed, 
anyone that touches you, anyone that arrests you after you have issued an ecclesiastical deed has broken the most fundamental rules upon which the entire system of Western law and Roman law, in fact, international law is based. If they even put a hand on you, they have crossed the bounds. They are out of bounds and they have broken their own rules. Now, I have not spent any time on this because I didn't want to encourage people walking around saying, you can't touch me and playing games with it because sometimes people take it out for a spin. But the fact is that you are, you are even more immune than diplomatic immune you are untouchable by being a, in sacred office once you have sealed your ecclesiastical deed poll in blood. You are circumscribed. You are holy. You are restored as being a being blessed and being part of the divine and representing the divine. You are holy. You are sacred. So when they touch you, when they arrest you, when they hit you, they are breaking their own rules. And this is implied with every single dishonor in their system. Now, if they will not even follow the rules by which they make things sacred, then there's not a church of theirs that is sacred anymore. There's not a court that's sacred anymore. There's not a parliament that's sacred. There's not a building that's sacred. There's not an embassy that's sacred. There's not a document that's sacred. There's not a rule that's sacred. Nothing of their system anymore can be regarded as sacred because they do not recognize the laws of sacredness upon which their system is built. Okay? That's the answer. Yes. All right. Thank you, Frank. Uh, I wasn't sure if you saw the maps there from the Divine Water Project. Uh, and the question is, uh, regarding the massive animal and actually all beings, even men and women dying around the globe. Do you have any thoughts on what's going on with that? Yeah. I, I, note, I note that there's been a number of arguments that it's chemical weapons and harp and, and, and other things. And, and what I'd say is, is that, um, yes, they, yes, they have tools and weapons that can do amazing things, but um, don't underestimate their incompetence like for example the Haiti earthquake which had a direct relationship to the oil drilling underneath shallow drilling underneath the capital Port-au-Prince um, can be attributed just to good old greed but I believe that what you're seeing is the effect when there are massive fluctuations in the earth's magnetic fields and and animals that depend upon magnetic fields with their own organic um, gy gyroscopic um, uh, homing, um, basically, literally fall out of the sky. And it causes, I believe, when there are massive fluctuations, um, a, effectively a, fa a failure, a fatal failure in their ability to fly. And they, um, they die from the impact by basically falling out of the sky and hitting the ground. All the fish are, are similar. So I believe what you're seeing isn't someone taking out some death ray for a, for a spin, but rather the earth giving us signs of the impending changes that were always prophesized as part of the end of days, but also of the cycle of change, which all corresponds. Uh, the end of days is the experience of men and women but the cycle change is the natural experience of the earth, and it's all coinciding. So these are the signs of the end of days, and it's, it's sad that people are interpreting it as secret biological weapons. It's not. It's, just, it's a natural phenomenon. Um, the fluctuation of the magnetic fields is part of the growing instability of the fields, which is a sign that the crust is about to move. Okay. All right, thank you for that, Frank. I will go to the phone lines real quick for a question from South Texas. South Texas, are you there? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, Frank. Um, Hi. I, I want to let you know how much I appreciate your prompt uh, response to the emails that I sent. Um, <clears throat> my question, my first question is, 
with regard to the ecclesiastical deed poll to register